Hey folks, back with another tutorial for you. Today we're looking at funk. And I'm like not saying like really old school James Brownish funk necessarily or very modern funk like the band Hi Fay that you get on your reels. Um, but like just general funk vibes or how you can add a little bit of funk into your other music such as like jazz fusion or rock funk fusion um, got ourselves a guitar today I'm playing my Hackstrom Viking I love it to bits we're playing a very thick 3 mil Pictrum pick um, this just adds a bunch of attack and um, That is sort of what we want here. Um, the guitar in funk, like traditional James Brown type funk, is more of like a, a conga, more of a percussion instrument anyways, than, um, than an actual like lead instrument. In modern day funk that changes, and in jazz funk fusion and in rock funk fusion, certainly. Um, but like for, for traditional funk, it's just all high end, all attack, all the time to cut through like a dense mix with a bunch of horns. Uh, would, the horns usually occupy like the same sonic spectrum that a guitar, uh, a, or certainly a 60s, 70s era um, guitar would occupy usually, like very mid-focused sort of a, a rounded tone. So to get around that, we just take our bridge humbucker. You can do this on a single chord guitar, by the way. Telecasters sound fantastic for funk, and strats also sound phenomenal for funk. Um, but I think, when I think of funk, um, I think of 335 sounds, and the Viking is, in my opinion, a better 335. Um, First up, some housekeeping. Uh, almost 70% of you people who watch my videos are not subscribed. If you subscribe to this channel, it helps me out a lot. It lets me do lots of cool stuff like partner up with brands, and um, that allows me to actually, you know, have different gear to demo and uh, also to have interesting stuff to play because stuff ain't cheap. What, what are we doing? Um, so, first of all, let's talk rhythm. Uh, the rhythm of all funk guitar is 16th notes, and that's like... And that's pretty much constantly just rolling along. You just want to keep that 16th note barrage going. Just as like, think of it as like hi-hats that are just going... In the background, basically. And um, chord-wise... We can use pretty much anything. I'll just use like um, the major seven chord there for a sec. But we sort of want like extended chord voicings. You can do it with. Um, with power chords but it just doesn't sound right like it's just eh, you're, you're missing something and if you're just doing like uh, root and third eh, maybe but not quite and um, like at least I'd say go for like a seventh chord or a ninth chord or a seven sharp nine aka the Hendrix chord and you can basically there's a bunch of funk tunes that just have like one chord just running through the entire piece and that's all fine and well. You can write funk just with like one 
chord chugging along on those 16s, just hammering home the point. If your band uh, setup is big enough, like if you're just the three piece, then maybe not, you know, that might get boring after a while. Uh, but if you do have like a keyboard player and a horn section and like a really good vocalist, um, then yeah, sure, why not? Um, if you prefer more modern funk, it uh, we're staying on the rhythmic aspect now. Um, you can incorporate a lot of stops. Stops usually sound funky as hell if you syncopate them a little. So. One, two, three, four. Now just picking power chords. If we do them as single notes and we syncopate them even more, we can get something like something like that um, and if you really want to uh, push home the funk you can uh, do the stops as chords so you can go like really dense chords often don't sound as, as nice because they're like too harmonically complex to uh, be heard in like the short bursts of actual note definition that you get in this playing style. Not to mention the fact that it's super hard to mute like five strings at once if you're trying to do something like that. So yeah, um, how do we play this like well for one right hand just goes and we're basically hammering on the one on the one just going on one 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 da 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 to make people dance like music up until that point so jazz type had like a two and four sort of thing and you can dance to two and four bass music but as everybody knows who's ever stepped to uh, a dance club we um tend to focus on like uh, 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 hard like beats and the hardest beat in the beat there is is the one obviously and if we hammer it home and everybody hammers it it's like the entire band goes even the drummer just goes and just nailing that one every time then um, we get a lot of emphasis on that and you you leave no doubts basically on where you are rhythmically and uh, people want to just shake it to funk so let's just give them a rhythm that everybody can understand and enjoy um, so we're looking for the one and a two and a three and a four and a four and we're accenting whatever else we like to accent in between just dampening the strings for everything other than the chord positions we want to um, the, the the beats we want to accent 
the beats we want to accent get the chord and everything else just gets the that sort of reiki sound it's not super hard to do but pretty hard to master and i'm nowhere near mastering this by the way i'm pretty new to funk myself um and then yes you can spice up the rhythms and throw in some like triplets time it or whatever like you just add all the rhythm uh, rhythmical complexities you want to but but really the home base of funk music is the 16th pocket and uh, I really want to drive home the point that if you're on that 16th pocket you're doing everything right now for sounds, this is like the main thing that I do here in the channel of sounds. Um, we have a not too trebly but pretty trebly guitar sound that gets us a uh, nice and pokey high end. but not like super pronounced, uh, very clean headroom type high end that we get from like a, um, a 100 watt high watt or something that would just, you know, just slam you in the face every time you hit a chord. This is also pretty bright and pokey, which, I, uh, which is why I tame it with a little bit of reverb. Uh, the other thing you can do if the band allows for it is, to hit a little bit of distortion just to round over those uh, harsh transients and to uh, we can get a little bit more um, of a smoother waveform with a little bit of distortion on it. This is just a, um, a tube screamer that I put in front of the, the amp. Um, and the amp that we're using today is a 65 Deluxe, uh, which is like a pretty standard clean amp. And uh, yeah, that sounds dope. Uh, the other thing you can do is hit a filter, uh, waz for example, I'll turn around for this one because my setup is underneath the desk. Now, wah. Everybody's heard of wah. That's like the prototypical funk sound, yeah? So if uh, if someone says, play something funky, that's pretty much what they're thinking of. Um, and you can do it with auto waz and like synth waz and you name it, but like, in my opinion, nothing beats like the old box black waz. They're just, they're really nice. And then uh, for solos, I like to use a fuzz. Um, kick that on. Mainly Again to round over all of those harsh transients and then if we hit the neck pickup
we get really, really nice, rich, harmonic, uh, uh, harmonics, especially upper harmonics with this, and they really just cut through a mix. Uh, but it also stays pretty dense uh, in the low end, um, so we don't lose the definition of the rhythmic uh, rhythm section, which we are very much a part of in funk. Um, and also while soloing, I'd say less notes is probably more while soloing in a funk tune uh, and keep it like syncopated and rhythmically uh, interesting um, and more like simple melody uh, a, a simple melodic approach as, a, as opposed to uh, long scale runs uh, yeah and that's pretty much how you add a little bit of funk into your music uh, y'all have a lot of fun with um, using some funk rhythms in your bands and if you end up using uh, these uh, tips to start a musical project then I'd be very happy if you tag me in it and just left it like a link to it in the comments it's always fun to see what people do with the little bit of uh, advice that I can give here yeah um, okay so that's all for today see you next time and um, the next video will be pretty much exactly the same thing, uh, funk, but we're tackling it from a bassist perspective. So if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Bye. Whoa. Thank you.